What were children's history books like in the 1950s? So for those who don't know, these are called Ladybird books. Uh, they're kids' books, very, very short, uh, that were published over decades long. Uh, they're about all sorts of subjects, but most of mine are history ones. Now, they're all written by the same guy, Lawrence Dugard Peach, and they're published in the 1950s and 1960s. So first off, something nice. Uh, it has to be said, these books are absolutely stunning. Every single page has got a full colour painting on it. And having reread them, I've got to say, they're not as bad as I thought they'd be. 95% of the actual words are just pretty basic, unobjectionable recountings of things that happened. Even the pictures are pretty darned accurate, although every now and again you will find an extremely 1950s lady. But of course there are some things that we would say totally differently now, and... Yeah, there is that. It's quite clear that the author's not expecting anyone to read these except British children, and specifically English children. A Welshman himself, he did not expect trouble from Wales. The Scots were different. They were a race of tough fighting men. These barefoot grubby people are apparently a typical Irish family. Ireland was a wild country. And then there's the wider colonial stuff. The East India Company was one of the greatest companies of all time. And if you didn't know any history outside of these books, then the colonisation of America and Australia would be totally peaceful, except for those mean natives who kept attacking us. So the colonists had to spend most of their time defending themselves against the Indians. On the island of Maui, Captain Cook was treated like a god. But this did not prevent the natives, who were great thieves, from trying to steal anything they could from his ship. Uh, apparently, of the Easter Island statues, no one knows who made them. Lawrence, the people on the island made them. Well, that's cool. Even the Ladybird books knows that there were black people in Roman London. Probably wouldn't say it like that, though. And then there's stuff that's just probably not true, like Walter Raleigh laying his cloak over a puddle so that Queen Elizabeth wouldn't get her feet wet. And there's stuff that's just weirdly editorial, like King John was pure evil, or James I being the meanest and most bigoted king the country ever had. It's a shame because the format of these is absolutely gorgeous. Like, no wonder people collect them. I'd love for Ladybird to redo this with an updated text. Maybe do a broader range of historical figures, but keep that 50s illustration style. 